Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to the start of a new campaign in Red Dusk in which we're playing as the Republic of South Africa. Now, we're going to read about the country info, so if you'd like to skip ahead a few minutes into the video, we're going to start moving and talking about uh, focus and maybe our leader and uh, wow, please go right ahead. South Africa has been an apartheid-stricken nation since 1948. During the Cold War, the South African apartheid situation has been getting worse. The economy has gone below stagnation and other various sectors have been hit drastically. The military coup in 1994 against Mandela has been successful in stopping him from getting to power. Mandela had been detained in the South African military custody for possible treason, which the military junta addressed in the media. Due to the ban of Mandela's African National Congress and imposed martial law on the whole country, it has been very hard to protest against the junta's rule. Thousands and thousands of ANC protesters have been arrested and many have been shot. Due to the terrible apartheid atmosphere, the ANC has become an insurgent force, using guerrilla tactics and strategies and conducting terror attacks against the military to get their freedom. A great tension of a civil war arises as a military junta gives no relief to the ANC and the locals. Amidst a terrible situation, the United Nations has condemned South Africa for the continued apartheid and emergency crisis in the destabilized country due to the pro-white parliament wanting to get back to power again. There is a continuous power struggle between the parliament, military junta, and the ANC in the nation. The tensions don't calm down, grim future which for South Africa, onwards. And path guides, there's nothing here, unfortunately, but thank you to the developers for making this. Very interested in seeing how this mod works, and uh, or it continues to be developed, but a successful coup? It's been six years since Juno Vilosian and his mandate overthrew the old South African government. Although this was done to stop Mandela and his extremist ANC from getting power and succeeded in that, we still weren't able to properly stabilize South Africa or eliminate ANC even after six years of Junta rule. The ANC is stronger than ever, political factions are formed once again, and the international pressure continues still. Only the future can tell if it will pass through the storm or not. National Spirits Apartheid so Ever since the first colonists arrived in South Africa, the state of segregation has been here. Despite making the majority of the population, the Africans are oppressed at every corner. As much as it helped us keep the government and country in our firm hand, it has been a cause of many revolts, insurgencies, and international problems for South Africa in recent years. I might, I might keep the peace, but for how long? Martial law in the dead of night on the unknown street of the unknown town in South Africa, a dark shadow was passing by windows and doors. Not in a creeping slow way, but a fast run. Not even daring to look back, behind it followed two lights and a group of footsteps together with barking dogs and barrels pointed into our darkness. They split up into smaller groups trying to follow, and find that shadow that was running through the corridor of the town. Soon enough, one of them cornered it. A young soldier, no, no older than twenty, pointed his gun in the humanoid shape. From the darkness, a panicked voice was heard as a figure stepped forward. Please, sir, you don't understand. I was late for my trick. It was... A single being bang appears through the night, and the shadow fell onto the ground. It was nothing more than an African miner, now covered in his own blood, giving out his finer breath. The old shoulder, soldier rushed to help him to correct his mistake, but the man gone out, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Compelled a nuclear warhead, foreign policy. Oh, we can get involved in other people's wars? Okay, well, look at that, that's cool. Uh, Memento Mori. Nelson Mandela, one if not the greatest threat to a government and system, has been in prison for the past six years. Since then, it was far easier to control his actions, and not his influence. Belosian and the government understood that the system as it is cannot be kept like it is forever, hence why numerous plans have been made to somehow work out a peaceful solution to the issue. With the involvement of Mandela, however, it seems that some organizations and people have other plans. Uh, I like more stability. More money, more money in state security. Given the poor security of our state in the century, uh, Villusion has decided to increase spending on state security, so that we can intervene if the population decides to revolt. The increase in its security budget will lead to increase of armed forces in the area and the installation of security cameras. Military controlled state. In 1994, Nelson Mandela attempted to overthrow our government and thus our country's and our country's prosperity. Thankfully, uh, at the last minute, General Villusion brought peace to the streets of South Africa with quick military action. However, ever since that moment, our parliament, our political apparatus has been replaced with a military junta, with serving as nothing more than a general's puppets. Hmm. <coughs> ANC insurgency. Having originally started as a political party of Nelson Mandela, the ANC sent the coup grown into an insurgent force, fighting their soldiers and police wherever possible. Their demands remain the same for Mandela and the apartheid. However, their means of achieving this have changed and become much more radical and dangerous. We must ensure that they are dealt with one way or the other. And then we have overstretched military. Oh, it's destroying our weekly stability. Oh god, we have a cup of coffee though. I know in the past video someone said uh, if my voice is okay. Yeah, it's okay for now. I don't think anything, anything has really changed. I've just gotten progressively more and more tired. When all is lost. Day 256. It is business as usual. I'm still in prison. But it's alright, I still haven't lost hope. Many would say that fighting the system is the lost gods, but I am still believing in a better future. If anything happens to me, I'll at least know that I wasn't the person who started to just watch while our brothers and sisters were suffering. As long as hope exists, there will be a way, Mandela wrote in his diary while occasionally raising his head to look at the bright moon on the night sky, which was peeking through the window of his prison cell. 
He was a broken man, but he still had hope and determination that he could only be robbable of fanatical political radicals. Before he could finish writing his diary, the gardener himself, flipping through $150 he was given, spoke to him all into a familiar tone. Hey Mandela, you got a visitor. As soon as he heard that, heard that, he turned his attention to the paperwork that was piled on his little desk. Mandela looked through the bars only to witness a shadowy figure standing in front of him. He couldn't recognize the person's face, but he could clearly see that he was dressed in a clean and well, quite well-made coat. Not a moment passed since he made this observation, Mandela could see a barrel of a gun pointing straight at him. A shot pierced through the calm and quiet prison, and after that it all went silent again. One man was no more. Within an hour, the prison warden will be informed, and by the morning a report will reach Villogen's desk, where he realizes that his intentions of peace with the NC were nothing more than visual thinking. Hope remains. More guns for Sav Savimbi. Jonas Savimbi, the leader of Unita faction in the Angolan Civil War, has been the main anti communist force in Angola for the past 30 years. He has, of course, received his support from the government, including a limited military intervention during the 80s. Now, it seems like the war is reaching its end. After almost 30 years, we must make sure that Savimbi and his faction are the victorious ones. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, he's gone. Increase the military budget. Belosian, head of the government of the military junta, together with the government, has decided to raise the military budget to guarantee your state a strong and capable army that will be able to defend us against uh, aggressors, aggressors and rioters. With the increase of the military budget, will also increase the production and exports of armaments. It's a win-win, you know? Oh, we can send volunteers. Oh, crap. <clears throat> Hopefully they can learn something here. Well, we tried. <coughs> Forgot to do so. Public Sudan, huh? You're the one we don't care about, really. And it's not like we benefit from either side, so... Two anti-rebel operations. Now, after having the increased budget and spending state security, spending on state security, the town is going to start military operations aimed at dissolving dissident groups in the country. For any person who is in contact with these groups or directly part of them, their penalty will be death, and there will be no mercy for the traitors of the state. I don't know why we can do this one. I know. Uh, well, they're no longer here. But whatever. <coughs> Future South Africa, beer, friends, and politics eventually. Having, after having stabilized Cape Town and eliminated the, the largest armed group plotting against the state, the time is coming to choose the future of our motherland. In the coming weeks, elections will be held in Parliament to decide whether the Junta should remain pow in power or it would be necessary to reestablish a democratic parliamentary government. You learn a lot of stuff here. Oh, yeah. Happy June, everybody. A parliament meeting. After a long wait, the day has finally come. The today meeting will be held in parliament to decide the future of South Africa. The deputies will be, have two choices to vote. The military junta with the maintenance of power by Vilosian or choose a democratic parliamentary system. Now, only time will tell who will hold, who will hold power in South Africa. Be your friends in politics. As the sun was rising in the Port Elizabeth, the city was already alive. It wasn't even 7 in the morning. And the port was, was as well as many city pubs were active, but some of the fellow sailors, off duty soldiers, and old folks. Such a new morning for two old soldiers, veterans of the Angolan War, and most of all close friends, uh, William and Abdul. Both put different in political beliefs, skin color, and status, but bound by comradeship and alcohol. They met each other just like every morning, sat down, and ordered their drinks. After greetings were done, they moved on to their other topics, family stories, memories of serving in the army, etc. Until the conversation finally landed on the topic of politics, it was clear that the two were very different in this field. I'm not sure Abdu. The whole situation we got here is complex to say the least, but I think the old guy, Villogen, is the best choice we got. He's not the best with this we can normally say to William. <clears throat> Speak for yourself. I'm the black one here. At least serving in the army got me a better position in life, but that is sort of an excuse that the apartheid is still here. Heck, maybe parliament guys have a point. They aren't all that better. 
but they are the only saving grace to this country from an open civil war, Abdul remarked. I don't think so, but who gives a darn about our opinions, William said as he began drinking his beer. You're right, I just hope it'll be better. But as long as the penny pension's on time and I can drink with you, I'm happy, Abdul said before picking his bottle. Right, I'll drink to that. <sighs> Oh, rebellion in Ethiopia. Who could have seen that one coming? People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia versus Ethiopian People's Revolution Democratic for Hunt. Oh, commies killing each other. What else is new? Communists can't even trust themselves. <coughs> hey, see, we're making military factories. Keep going and be strong. <coughs> the day had come. Amid strict martial law, had been hard to govern the apartheid stricken nation. It was a terribly hot human day in Cape Town as a convoy of reactionary parliament ministers and generals of the military junta, escorted by four armored vehicles, reached the South African parliament. The well, SATF seemed to be in the parliament's garrison. While the arousing hypertension in parliament, it was quite comfortable for Tom Davidson, the unknown South African parliamentary member, and the right hand of his fellow leader, Frederick William de Klerk. Tom seemed to be profusely sweating due to, due to nervousness once entering the parliamentary building. Something's eating you, Tom. What is it? de Klerk asked uh, Tom. First, the pressure of today getting the position is immense. Secondly, open the ANC terrorists. Do not show up or else it might be helpful for the Junta seeking reaction to power of the throne, Tom says while seeing ASTF guards on the garrison. No need to worry about that, Tom. Our security is their responsibility. Well, they are one of the elites of the military, so ANC stands no chance. Rather, we should focus on today's meeting. So that's the victory should be ours, replies the clerk. May God bless us, Tom Davidson. At least I'm not leaving without a fight, says the clerk sarcastically while entering the parliamentary building. Let's see what's in her fate. As the animal was getting used, you, getting used to and seated in the South African Parliament, Tom was preparing his papers. He knew that everything he had done so far would be nothing compared to today. The entirety of South Africa depended on what could come out of this meeting. Parliament or the military, democracy or dictatorship, perhaps even the future of African majority could be decided here. On the other side of the building, the generals of the South African military, including Velozium, were almost the de facto rulers of the country were entering the building. So, General, what's the plan for today? We cannot be sure that the Parliament would stick to everything we did since 1994, one of the officers asked Velozium. It's quite simple. We must either make sure that if the transition of power happens, the parliament follows the course of our governments, or that they vote for us to remain in power, Belosian answered. And what if they refuse to decide with their course? One of the senior generals asked. Then we will coup them, Belosian asked briefly. Once all the members of the government were seated, the meeting began. There were a lot of speeches, timeouts, discussions, fact checking, and compromises made, but in the end, parliament secured the pow transfer of power. Military junta, junta remained. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to save here. <clears throat> What if we do this peacefully and then go like hard right? Let's try that one. The Republican level. Jumpstart the economy. Social reforms. Let's just say, you know, we're gonna do whatever we can to support ourselves. End of the apartheid state. Limited apartheid. Revolts everywhere. I guess we'll go down this round and see what happens. The Republic lived. The win of the election in the Parliament was a Republic. With the election, a new era began in South Africa. An era characterized by democracy, justice, and equality for all South African citizens long live the new Republic. Solidify our power. Just because the Parliament now is the wheels of power doesn't mean we control the waves. We still have to deal with any problems we might face with against our power to make sure that we sail smoothly. Uh, dismantle the army's influence. While the most notorious and despicable head of the Hydra has been decapitated, as many acquaintances and fellow makers of destruction remain to be still be dealt with. Belosian is gone, thank God for that, in order to make sure another man like him never comes to power again, however, he must clean our military ranks of any despot, dep, despotic power seekers at once. We shall launch a series of investigations on multiple different top gen military generals, ranging from members of this cabinet, to the ones with ties to the boards, to many other questionable officers and commanders. Oh yes, this certainly is going to be a strain on our combat efficiency and planning. It's far better. Uh, then risking another reign of terror under military rule, thus she will continue with the operation. Well, maybe we should have gone the other way, but maybe some other time. Initializing democratization. Headed by coalition of progressives and liberals, a broad range of de democratic reforms will be enacted, ranging from greater minority rights to easing government restrictions on voting. The largest of all these propositions uh, will be the most daunting one within the halls of parliament, the National Voter Regist Restoration Act, to simplify, that shall restore general parliamentary elections across our many regions, Bring back freedom and liberty to the people of South Africa. We shall not let the people suffer under the rule of a tyrant ever again. We shall not fail them again. Well, we'll see.
Or is it just you finding them there? Could you win here? <coughs> well, the division itself is getting more experience, which is great. Nice. Spend parliamentary powers. I, usually I don't like choosing democ democratic routes. But it's fine. We're still all 13 Democrats. We could negotiate with ANC, but we're probably not going to do that route for this campaign. If there's one major single flaw that had the largest factor beyond the villagers' coup against the Republic, it would be most certainly that the lack of ability for the Parliament of this nation to prevent such despots from gaining power. The Constitution, which was adapted from our English forefathers, has now quite obviously left a massive gap when it comes to handling a military coup. This Constitution shall be rewritten in order to prevent such a bloody takeover in the future. As part of the new bill proposed in parliamentary schedule, the powers of the Prime Minister shall be highly regulated, along with the interim Parliament government gaining massive powers, powers that shall be debated of ch change or once a suitable Prime Minister takes the leadership after the elections. Remove military-controlled state, so... Hey, he's becoming an infantry leader, which is great. Choosing your path. With the power in our hands, what's more secured against any elements that might seek to destroy, we're in a position to implement our promises. It's finally time to choose a way of governance and our future. Sorry to you guys if you wanted me to choose negotiate with ANC. Um, nice job, guys. Bring DeClerc back in charge. DeClerc, 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 DeClerc. The name rings like a ball of torment. Our bell of torment. Constantly reminding us just how good we had it before Villosian came in, firmly silencing any critics of him. It was only fair we bring the man back in charge. While many within the parliament harshly criticized this notion, saying the man is too old and will just repeat past mistakes, the new reforms and strengthening constitution is set to fix just that. We should keep the man and clean the legacy. Making sure that he's not even capable of making the same slip up as last time. New reforms. In contrast to the old military junta regime who was established with the goal of preserving outdated policies until the country decayed, will start the well intentioned reforms overall South Africa as a nation away from its old pasts. Wow. That okay. <clears> guy. <throat> Thought we were going to get cooed here. Societal reforms. <coughs> Excuse me. Our South Africa needs reforms, quite a few of them, especially from a social point of view. Apartheid is destroying and destroying a country, separating the people. Tensions are incredibly high. The people have never been so angry and disappointed in the government. If we want the situation to change before it gets worse, we must act now. Delay the inevitable. Ban their marches. Revolts everywhere, huh? And ramp up police funding. Increase political power. Police power. The incident. Not worth the risk. And then send everything we got. Moderate reforms, people understand, give us another chance, they must. Enact emergency parliamentary powers. Jumpstart the economy. If there's a, any glittering sound of a republic's failures, it would be her industry. Our economy suffered under the vices of neglect and ignorance, handicapped by corruption, and doomed to failure by a lack of industrialization. This should be back to the past, as well as we've begun a series of programs to spear economic development and growth for the future. Spearheaded by a statesman and politician, Mr. De Klerk, we should begin heavily investing in the consumer section of our economy, as well as giving grants to businesses and the resource extraction and construction sector of the economy, which attract foreign investors to come to the nation, crack down on the almost paralyzing inflation, and truly set our nation and its people on the course of success. Which sounds great. So, now we can involve Congo War, huh? The Liberian Civil War. Or was the other one? Here, over here, Sierra Leone. Well, let's see. Right wing nationalists. Hmm. Well, what is right wing nationalist? Nationalism, huh? But you're authoritarian Democrats. Well, let's see. Can we tell who has 
No manpower? Okay, so if you have no manpower, you're probably gonna lose. Uh, I'm gonna support you, Liberian Rebel Forces. Of doctrine. We're still losing weekly stability. Yeah, we are. Darn it. That sucks. Yeah, you do anything here. A little support. Yeah, you, you might be able to. Organizer. Infantry leader. Looking good. Nice. Good stuff. Um, once this division moves out, we can move in here, too. Oh, look at the Navy. Good job, Navy. What, who's in our Navy? A bunch of, like, three subs? Well, trade interdiction, then. And opening up to investments. Seems our effort to gaining investments to turn a profit. As multiple powerful Western economies have announced that they are putting their collective investments in our state. From France to Brazil, foreign businesses have begun to look upon our growing potential with envy. With, we shall certainly serve to benefit us later down the line. A majority of these funds should go into further developing the industrial sector, as we still suffer from severe, severe lack in material production. However, this is good news nonetheless. Let's hope we continue seeing such good news as uh, we progress. This one's more important to do. Or at least we can do this one first. Reconnect with the Crown. South Africa, while being a former British colony, still to this day has further relationships with the Crown. Now they're focusing on reforming our internal situation, we can also rekindle our friendship with Britain. Democratic. What are we? We are autocrats. Proponent of apartheid. Daily compliance goes way down. Foreign minister. I mean, I want more political power, so I guess we'll grab you first. Because it's cheap in the Navy. That's pretty bad for that one. More investments in the civilian sector. The religion of the economy was not one of mutual cooperation, not one of free markets, where all the people of the Republic could share in its prosperity. It was instead something that could only fund one thing, the army and its associates, the expenditures of which have held a large factor in the nation's current debt obstacle. This wrong shall also be righted. As Parliament has made an effort to divert millions of funding to the civilian sector of the economy, funding lower-level businesses as well as drastically increasing funding in the public sector projects, such as urbanization plans and better roads, as much of our country still uses dirt roads. A cordial meeting. De Klerk felt as if he was walking to an uncertain future, with his fate either being that of glory or death, or at least that's what he felt like as he walked to the Queen's meeting room. The Queen's aides opening the door, the sight of Queen Elizabeth II herself standing next to a chair befell William. Before he knew it, it was already in the room with the doors closed shut behind him, condemning him to whatever awaited him in this meeting with the Crown of the Isles. Upon further analyzing the room, being enthralled with the beauty of the crisp wood floor and the ever-expanding marble pillars decorating the room, De Klerk brought his attention back to the main objective, that being to console the Queen herself on the recent diplomatic mission to better relations with the Home Isles. De Klerk said he was focused. Good day, Your Majesty. I believe you have read my diplomatic message on the topic of better relations. De Klerk spoke, restraining his nervousness as best he could. Her Majesty spoke in a polite and tranquil tone. I have indeed, and I must say it has interested me, please. She gestured to the open chair. Have a seat. De Klerk sat himself on the uh, linen chair, writing his next words carefully as he observed the Queen sit herself on the chair opposing De Klerk's. <coughs> Just before he could open and explain himself, the Queen shut him down. While I am all for the rapprochements between our two nations or states, I must say, those troubles with those, uh, how do you say, extremists, yes. Do you still tend to handle them? Her tone now shifting to one of slight concern. De Klerk freezed or froze for a second. This was the last thing he had hoped he, she had mentioned, or would mention. Of course, those guys in Parliament would bicker for weeks about that, but now even the bloody queen, he brushed past his internal thoughts and answered it back immediately. But of course, Your Majesty, as we speak, South Africa's most loyal and elite guardsmen are quelling these fanatics. I can assure you there will be no more than needless squabbles. Obviously, to declare that there was nothing but lies, but they were nothing but false words given to Her Majesty in order for her to better reflect on the Republic. With the topic suppressed, the chat would continue. Nothing like lying to the queen. Also, we are out of uh, civil wars to get involved with right now, so which kind of sucks. I like the Civil Wars, or the, you know, things going on here. A little bit of a massacre happens. That's right, right, left-wing parties are completely banned. Interesting that it gets progressively more gray, more third Democrats. Oh, oh, we're over there too. Uh, or authoritarians. And then, uh, which is anarchist is just straight black, but okay. Uh, what is this? 
increased relations with the USA. If, there's anyone, if anyone of the great powers of the world that we must turn to in our time of need is the Americans. Well, yes, our allies in the home miles have aided us from the very beginning, and our Commonwealth allies will be more than welcome to aid us. The Americans have the money, strength, and power that we need to prop us back up again. We shall send a diplomatic envoy at DC, where they shall hopefully succeed in getting the Yankees to better us, help us in the future as we continue to build our nation up from the bottom. Seek Western aid. South Africa is extremely isolated due to the apartheid policies. Why would it seem like we were going to be lifted and the South Africa was going to turn into a democracy? The military intervened in 1994, screwing everything up. The aftermath of the coup further uh, diminished our relations with the West as they didn't seek to be allies with the military junta. Now that the parliament is once again in power, we can rekindle our relations with the West and gain so much needed support. Massacre. I, I don't want democratic activists. This wouldn't be bad to have. The Republic lives. You know what? We'll, we'll grab them anyways. <clears throat> That's fine for now. Uh, increase reliance on the dollar. Drift towards America. Lose political power, though. Increase reliance on the pound. Well, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Get more growth or better consumer goods. Uh, I think I'm going to increase uh, Western aid. Increase relations with the Commonwealth. Who better to go than to our brothers across the sea, especially when we need them the most? Our forefathers in the home islands, our fellow dominions in Canada and Australia, all share a vast history of their nation, a history that will be critical in our next foreign diplomatic step. For too long, we have remained isolated from our truest allies. This shall change as multiple diplomats are sent to London, Ottawa, Sydney, and all other members of the Commonwealth. It is likely that they will see through our efforts, though, as we are just trying to get some aid from an old friend, but then again, we don't really have any better options. Except America, of course. Chief of the Army, offense, offense. Two offense, or organization. Organization is good for defense, too. You know what? I'm going to be weird. I'm going to actually go with Magnus and Milan and get more offense. Usually I don't do that. I like the organization more because it helps both sides, but it will help us with army XP too. So, that's good. I wish we had edit templates, but whatever. Uh -huh. Good, good, good. Uh, Cape to Elizabeth Railway. Uh oh. Well, there goes 911. And what was the joy surprise of many to Clark likely in a bit improve his image in the way which benefits everybody, as they announced the construction of the Cape Elizabeth Railway, including a large amount of road repairs along the southern coast and infrastructure expansions. Parliament is in full support of this, with the notion of receiving majority votes and the plans for the set to commence immediately. This construction will likely ease access across the main urban sectors of the Republic, as well as improve internal trade and economic improvement. It seems that DeClerc is readily, really trying to make a change for the better, one railway at the time. Chris Lance on the pound. I think America would be better. As the U.S. is current hegemon of the world economy and its dollar is one of the most, if not the most, reliable currencies on the planet, it's only logical that we make better relations with D.C. and get closer in touch with the dollar. While, yes, the pound is a more locally popular currency among the government and people, the dollar is a smarter option in this case, as in the long run, it will bring us closer to the more profitable U.S. markets and rise the value of our original currency, a win-win scenario for both of our powers. All we can hope for now is that this will not further bring further inflation, because we have already have a particularly rough history with that already. I really want to make sure our artillery is very good. <coughs> yeah, I'm not getting that guy yet. If ever. I wouldn't mind getting some of this, but it's going to take forever to do so. We're going to lose political power anyway, so let's build faster, research things faster. Let's do that one. And the economic rebirth. After after many th thorough reforms, reforms that open up for global aid, South African economies have been turned into a new robust economy. Stability, construction speed, factory output, docket output. Great. And we'll get, probably delay the inevitable. No, 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 and time's up. We can't do anything more. We realize that apartheid is a problem too late. The black people are in revolt. Our supporters are in short supply, and even our own government despises us. We only do one thing, delay the inevitable. A war is upon us, a civil war is upon us, and there's nothing we can do except delay it as long as possible. The rebels want, against us want war. Let's give it to them, then. I wonder if we click on that first. Would anything else pop up in relation to that, or...? Because we have quite a few factors we need to make. Um, self propelled cast, all that stuff. We have no resources. But what else is new? Yeah. Military command would be good. That would be very good to get. Ooh, are we repairing ships? Yeah, good, 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 good. Looking pretty decent overall. And then ban their marches. There are a lot of freedom marches in our country everywhere, and this destabilizes our entire country. I want to prevent the people from rallying even more supporters against us. We'll have to ban their marches, and this way we'll make sure we shed less blood. 
So we go this route. I kind of really want to see what send everything we got to see what happens. Not worth the risk. <coughs> more, way more. Daily social democracy, liberalism, conservative support. Wow. I want to see like how radical can we get? And ramp up police funding. Uh, well, banning those marches was a BS plan. These people are angrier than before. There are disasters all over the country. Most likely, the president takes a walk in the streets. They'll try to beha behead them. Our stupid country is going to crap for our very eyes. We want to if, if we want a supremacy against these rebels, we must increase support for the police. If we increase the number of policemen and uh, marie on the streets, the riders will be in cages. So we did all this route first to bolster our economy, and it looked like we're trying to do better. The incident. I really want to know what this route's like. And ramp up police funding. But increase police power. Okay, crap. The police in the Gendarmes evidently cannot do enough to bring into line four wretches who can't even read it and talk about freedom and equality. Since their loyal armed forces have their hands tied, they'll expand their power in this jur jur uh, in their jurisdiction, martial field, and make sure that they can arrest anyone without even bringing them to a court. That'll work very well. Ooh. You know, a lot more social support here. I've never seen a hungry win here, so. Ooh, we're losing a lot of political power. Romania is on the super aggressive side here. Joseph wins, huh? Selections, eh? The incident, eh? <clears throat> and lo and behold, the moment none of us were waiting for has happened. Today, during a public demonstration, a member of our armed forces opened fire on the crowd. We don't know if they were running deaths, but probably yes. The general chaos also brought a state of terror to the various civilians, and many were injured as they fled. Now, public opinion is more heated than ever. The entire nation is in uproar against us. Oh, well, would you look at that? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that was fast. Okay, now we're really back to where we were at before. Okay. Well, the third Democrats are over now. Um, we're gonna sit in everything we got, probably. We tried. It's too late. The people hate us, of course. The nation's a turmoil. Even the military itself probably despises us. There's no more miracle. There's no more peace than they could say the now raw jewel of Africa. If people want this war, then we're gonna give it to them. Let's suppress those guys with the army. Let's get let those ungrateful people drown in their own stupid blood. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Who needed political power? Hey, a Christian defense world. Look at that. Send in everything we got, y'all. Try being democratic, opening up things, making sure people can vote, whatnot, but you know, they just couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle the truth. Is it really worth it? I don't know. We'll see if there's any folks here after this. Look at that. Oh. Oh, the Soviets got involved. Oh, there's Vladimir. The problem solver. Bortnikov as KGB director or but through chef. Huh. Efficiency. Stability. Incriminate Pugo. Incriminate Yazov. The little traitors. Well, what do we have here now? Oh, chaos in the streets. 
Blood, destruction, and chaos rages on the streets of Cape Town. Johannesburg, Elizabeth, and across the country, we are in an unofficial state of civil war until the rebels gain enough organization to proclaim a full-scale rebellion against us. There isn't much time left before the midnight strikes the clock. Well, let's come to military factories, because God knows we're going to need them right now. Come on, Soviets, do something here. It's a bad look for uh, Putin. Army desertions. Oh, magnificent. We were right then. Even our army hates us. After all we did for them, they stabbed us in the back. Some members of the army, even. Even Boers and Africaners decided to defect to the rebels and fight for South Africa free from our tyranny. Now that we've passed the time of no return, we'll get every single one of those guys who betrayed us, every single one of those rebels, and we'll show out South Africa what true peace means. And we get a mutiny. Well, let's see what happens. And then, good night, South Africa. Everybody wanted to go to the sentence of the grave. African proverb. <coughs> Revolts everywhere, wow. In the early hours of the morning, the Johannesburg garrison exited the barracks and began arresting the policemen. Upon attempts by several police colonels and captains to fire on the garrison to restore order, they were promptly slaughtered. The subordinates would quickly surrender. The garrison would then proceed to barricade several streets and begin making demands for the release of all political prisoners, the release of ANC terrorists, and an end of apartheid. Seeking to end this quest mess quickly, government forces quickly put Johannesburg districts under lockdown to ensure no possible ANC guerrilla intervention or reinforcement. Using special forces, the half-baked barricades were bypassed with no trouble. Officers were captured or gunned down, and the rank of the file were arrested. While the nation's boil reaches a new peak as the National, Day de uh, National Party demands summer execution and the Progressive Party demands a massive pardon, the weight of the, what still occurred hangs over the people's heads. A preamble to civil war? Happens. How's the economy, though? Chugging along. Th thus to South Africa. Unlock South African anarchy decisions. This better be worth it. Oh, man, that's actually really cool. I'm not seeing this one yet. So we are the Republic of South Africa. That's us. Fifth Commando Army, led by Johannes Geldenhuis, the last guard. Heart of Darkness. Their genetic focus, South African National Front. Oh, he's back here. Twice a savior. Best soldiers money can buy. Heart of Darkness. African National Congress, there's ANC with Thabo Mbeki. Boer Free State, of course, the Dutcher here. Eugene Blanche. Far right paramilitaries. That's like the dogs of war. Yeah. And then, what is this? South. African Nationalist Front. Oh, you're over here too. Well then. Ah! I think we got more stuff unlocked. Yay! Reforming the Army. Light military investments. Modernize your industry. Well, as much as I want to do that, I think we have some other things we got to do first. Um, yeah. Got some farming. Agriculture decisions to cost increase by 100. Holy crap. Oh, so, oh look at that. Minecraft. Hey, research slot. Yeah, I encourage tourism here right now? Mm, probably not. Support the construction of energetic sectors, industries, open new mines. Build coal factories. Found XRO Mining Company. Support the Anglo American Coal Foundation. Export rare materials, a new great industrial era. Well, then. Well, we're going to reform the army. South Africa, a great homeland, is no longer in control of an armed junta that would block any detected reforms. Having finished the preparations in the political arena, it's time to improve the military of South Africa. I hope we still have all 18 div divisions here. Oh, well. Um, well, you know what? Fine. We'll hire somebody else. Well, if we can, we have no command power. Door gear. Gonna have to be field marshal now. Uh, let's see. Go 
goes there, goes there. Go in if you can. You're done doing that. Ah, uh, they have their own divisions too, darn it. <coughs> I was gonna say, like, we have uh, quite a few divisions to use here. Alright, so if you're really all together. There you go. I want you to hold first. See what happens. Oh, there goes Osama. Goodbye, Osama. You can stay there. It's fine. All right, you're going to push here. Take the tanks. They're the only mobile force that we've got here. You're going to help out. Nothing like a slight civil war. I haven't seen this anarchy stuff though. It's kind of cool. Rocket artillery is pretty nice. Maybe better some of this stuff. Yes. Rocket artillery. Um, 1980s rocket artillery. I don't see rocket artillery. What the heck? There it is. Oh. 1990s. There you go. Did you just do this? Hey, just reform the army. Light military investments. The government is sad that the current state of the army is critical, not because of a lack of troops, equipment, or certain reserves, but because of its overextension. The problem is much greater than one might think. Our national army is almost empty, and the industry can't produce enough guns to restock it. For this reason, it's sad it could invest, increase investments in the army. Lost 8,000 versus 21,000. Fifth Commander Army is going to die, hopefully. Uh, you guys should get in there too. That's fine. The Boar Free State's doing pretty well. Supplies aren't so good up here because we need this tile. We absolutely have to have this tile. So we got to wait though because this is more important first. If anything, what do we have resources of anything here? Artillery, not so much, but we could use a little more arty. Anti air. Hmm. Oh, we can't even add anything to it, dang it. <clears throat> Alright, so this kind of sucks. Yeah, that's fine. Because I'm going to move here next. I'm going to swing around. It's a very good defense spot right here. Good. Oh, oh, there they go. Go where you need to. Because we need this tile too. But I followed it with this. I would like to edit our templates, but you know, sometimes we just can't. Good. Schroeder wins the elections. Okay, at all you do this, could you do that? Just in case, at least you down here. Getting another port would be very nice. Nope. There goes the Iraq and Kuwait. Very nice. Good job, guys. Now I need you to storm into the side. We're going to leave the side open. We're going to start attacking the Boar State 2. <clears throat> Buying foreign armaments. To solve the problem that scares and broke equipment quickly and efficiently, we ought to buy weapons for foreign countries. We could buy better weapons for much more powerful modernized nations such as America, France, or the UK. And army volunteers, too. Ooh, we lose a lot of population. It's used to have a massive army of young and untrained soldiers. Therefore, the government has decided to replace a mandatory conscription with a volunteer system to have a well-trained reserve. Bro, why would we do that now? Uh, we're not doing that one. Uh, modernizing industry. 
We must quickly modernize our industrial sector if we want our industry to produce enough goods for the populace and have a stable and advanced economic system. It will take a long time to complete this process, but it's necessary for the welfare of our country. <clears throat> so far we're doing pretty well, I'd say. That's a perfect no, but we're doing pretty well. Uh, I don't mind encircling these soldiers here, that'd be nice, but still. So, where are you going? Good. Lump one time would be nice to take two. Go in. Good. I want to leave the bare minimum down here because they can maybe be more willing to attack us, maybe, perhaps? No, no, I just want. Yeah, just you. Come up here. The north is really where we need to focus, so. <clears throat> hold on, now we're out of coffee. Single division should be able to hold the mountains here. Should be the key word. Oh, we have no resources. God dang it. Alright, whatever. Go in. Should be fine here. Nice. Go in. Uh, actually, you all go here. You go here. You should be able to spell attack here. Mm. Ah, you're still there too. Okay. And focus and modernize our industry. That'd be great. I think the ANC is the one we want to kill off the last. Wait, what happened here? Hello? I'll give him a second here. Yeah, you push here. Just do a push in general. No, probably not. Because AI is too stupid. You are not doing that there. You are going over here. You are not going to attack by yourself here. That's just dumb. You are not doing that either. That's stupid. Nice. Hold here. And go in. There you go. Another democratic revolution? No. There you go. Weird, but okay. I should be able to take that too. Good, look at that. Pretty nice. Let's go here. Look at that. Um, combined warfare, treachery speed, playing infantry. I'm still going to mobile warfare. I'm not moving in. Oh, look at the war free state. Ah, well then, guys, guys, go in. Nice job, guys. No rebels, no problems. Eh, not bad. <clears throat> Keep the pressure up on them. The Alliance. The Civil War is over in South Africa will never be the same again. The ANC rebels have done far too much damage. Junta has been criticized for its actions and weak policy and also lost support among the entire population and their governments feeble than ever. If it weren't for one small detail. The day that arrived in Villagin's office, from Peter Van Booth, also known as the Groot, Grootta Crocodile, and former President and Prime Minister of South Africa. President, former President Botha, in his letter, proposed to meet Villagin formally, in a face-to-face -face meeting, to lay the foundation for a coalition between the National Party and the military junta, in order to strengthen the government, is to in, inculcate a little sanity in the minds of those who still stubbornly oppose us. After reading the letter, Villagin decided to organize a meeting as soon as possible, specifying that it only be out of the formality, given his approval for the coalition. Avocators and Boers always unite in the fight for the South African democracy. Well, I mean, the Clark is still a leader here. Well, for now, at least. Um, do we have anything else after that? Home of African democracy. Well, I don't know about that. Um, our agriculture. 
To have avant-garde agriculture, the government decided to invest in the new agriculture machinery to guarantee that our nation could produce enough food and other essential goods. The government has limited itself to small and triggered investments and ensure the very minimum. Uh, okay. I don't really do any political power. This one's okay because we get it back eventually. A considerable percentage of our population is underemployed. If we merge a problem with a shortage of minerals and other natural resources, we can solve both at once. The Minister of the Economy has proposed the construction of new mines and regions rich in materials and minerals. That'll reduce unemployment and grant us economic stimulation throughout the possible export of these minerals. A formal meeting. And so after Constant Villagin, the leader of the South African Junta, accepted the proposal for a political alliance with, from former President William Botha, he found himself in front of his palace to meet him formally and officialize his coalition. Villagin was warmly greeted by the palace guards and Botha himself as he was about to enter. Minister Constant, how nice to meet you in person, says Botha while he puts a hand on his shoulder and invites him to the enter. I was looking forward to our meeting, he says, continues to say even before Villagin can utter a word. Both as a very friendly way guides Villagin through the various rooms of his palace, making him visit it until they sit in the main hall to form a coalition. I hope you enjoy the tour of my house, Mr. Constant. Anyway, it's time to talk about our business. Would you like a glass of wine while we discuss it? Both says yes with a smile on his face as he saw a Villagin. Mm, that's fine by me, but I don't think it took that long to officialize this. Says Villagin, somewhat suspicious of both his behaviors, too friendly for a political meeting, and too kind for a man of his reputation. Villagin was confused by his attitude, but still, he decided to trust him. A former president only wants the best for his country, right? Do not worry, I insist, says Botha as he orders one of the men in the room to take a bottle of wine. In itself, the alliance between Botha and Villagin already existed, and the meeting was organized for pure formality, and after a few minutes, the man comes back into the room with a bottle of red wine and two glasses, into which he pours it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Villagin, let me pour it for you. Botha says with a beaming smile as he hands the glass to Villagin. Very kind of you. Says Villagin, even more suspicious of his intentions, but despite this, he takes a sip from the glass. This meeting went well. How about we make a toast? A toast to our lines? Villagin asks in an almost stupid way for the other man to enter the room, as he expects a completely different answer. No, a toast for friendship to a uh, meaner Villagin. Cheers. We get true intentions next, huh? Great job, military. You deserve a pat on the back. Maybe a raise, too. Good job, subs. You didn't kill anything, but that's alright. You didn't have to. What is this? Piece of. Oh! As the tremors of anarchy shake our once unified lands, the threads of our nation unravel in the midst of chaos South Africa weeps. As the sun sets on this fractured landscape of South Africa, we stand united and in the echoes of a hard-fought struggle we proclaim peace at last. Regret Luko. Oh. The urgent siege to strengthen our front lines presses heavily upon us, demanding the enlistment of able-bodied men from our territory, yet in doing so, we're actually acutely aware that such a move was alienating our own citizens, potentially jeopardizing the vital support required for our faction's war efforts. Cracking open, open army caches. Unearthing these hidden reserves presents a crucial opportunity to equip our forces with the resources needed for the challenges ahead. Tap into the remnants of a bygone era to secure a strong future for our faction and recycle our old armor. Repurposing outdated armored vehicles becomes imperative as we strive to maximize resource efficiency on the battlefield, salvaging valuable components and freedom decommissioned tanks to bolster our mechanized forces. Oh, look at that. We lose the, the, all the negative traits and whatnot. Peace has been restored to South Africa. Oh, we can buy four weapons too. I'm not from the USA. Medium amount, large amount. France, UK, okay. Um, we must quickly monitor the industrial sector if we want our industry to produce enough goods for the populace and have a stable and advanced economic system. It'll take a long time to complete this process, but it's necessary for the welfare of our economy. Wow, that's great. Modernization, native modernization, overall transport systems, agricultural reforms. Okay. Peace restored after months of intense fighting and anarchy in South Africa. It's now clear to the world that order has been restored to the nation by the South African government. After the military transition of power to the parliament, many South Africans had high hopes for the country's future, uh, only for all hope to collapse together with the nation itself. In the ensuing civil war, the government force still led by the clerk was able to defeat the rebel factions. Although some see this as a much better outcome compared to the other radical factions, thousands have died only for little to no change. In contrast to the promises of reform and changes came under, still under the rule of the same regime that caused the country's downfall, South Africa seems to be staying in its current path perhaps forever this time. Melancholy reigns. Two intentions for several days now, rumors of Peter Villalbota's lack of loyalty to Villagin and the Junta have spread throughout South Africa. In fact, these rumors claim that Bota has much bigger plans for South Africa, and among these is the political elimination of Villagin. Junta loyalists are criticizing Villagin's lack of care for the situation. In fact, he's very convinced, along with the majority of support of apartheid, that the Guta Crocodile P.W. Bota is a man of honor and loyal to the country and the coalition, and that the rumors have been dispersed by rebels who want to break up with the coalition. Hmm. Lightning always precedes thunder. Cool in Cambodia. Well, I mean, is anything else going to happen here? No. Well, maybe, maybe not. Civil war in Yemen. Maybe not. 
Import agriculture machinery. To increase the quality of our products in the shortest possible time period, the government has decided to import new machinery. These high quality goods will be more advanced than ours and will be suitable for working in the agricultural sector. So, I think we're going to end it there and see what happens maybe the next episode. South Africa is looking alright. We are a authoritarian democratic government, but I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. So, if you enjoyed our first video of us playing as South Africa, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on with the former jewel of Africa. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.